go. Can you enlighten us on what that was like for you? How did you get to this place where now this is such a, you know, part of your work and how you help other people? Mm. Yeah. I mean, you know, first off, I, I never wanted to be in this world, you know, um, I think you and I kind of have that, um, you know, on the, on, on par there. Um, you know, I wanted to be an AFL player growing up. Um, that was my inspiration. You know, it was an, it was an, it was a need for external validation upon reflection, but AFL was my world. That was my identity, you know, and I'm so interested in identity and how multifaceted and layered it is because, how could something like kicking a football literally be who I was, you know? But I mean, I think I was um, always kind of a, you know, a bit of a jumpy kid. Uh, you know, my first memories are um, fear-based. Uh, you know, I was, I went to the, uh, I went to the bathroom and um, my, you know, a friend of mine were jumping on the trampoline outside and I couldn't wait to get out there. And, um, you know, obviously I had to go to the toilet. So I had to have time with my thoughts and my first memory is kind of a panic attack is I remember looking at my hands and thinking, how did I get into here? Like, how did I get into this body? And I, I don't know how old I was, but shortly after that, I started, I started writing when I was about four years old. And, um, the first like major piece I wrote was a 10,000 word essay about a kid with depression and his, his parents were moving through a trauma. And I don't think that's kind of normal for a 10 year old kid, not in a good way as well. I'm not trying to use that as a, Oh, go me. It's like, I had some issues. <laughs> 10,000 words. Yeah. Well, I found it about a year ago and start and reread it. And it was, it was just over 10,000 words. So um, it was in 2003. So I was born in 1993 and um, the date was, was in 2003. And um, yeah, it was interesting reading back on it because the protagonist was a, was a young fellow named Peter Reynolds and his life was just getting worse and worse. His parents died in a fire accident. He was living with his grandparents. He was bullied at school and he couldn't find his place in the world. But I think abstracting out, I've always been interested in how to find meaning because I've been so confused as to how we, we are alive in a world we don't know, you know, um, metaphorically speaking. And that, that has plagued me for my whole life, you know, and I became very engrossed in this idea that I was going to become an AFL player and it was who I was, you know, literally people knew me. I, I would sleep with a football in hand, you know? And, um, anyway, I did okay. I tried my luck down at VFL and, um, it was like halfway through the season in 2013 and I got cut and I didn't know what would happen, you know, at the time. And I paid no attention to the fact that they said, you know, we'd like, you know, we think you're okay. We'd like you to come back. Um, I just paid attention to, we won't be offering you a place this year. And I didn't know, like I said, that my identity was AFL. So when that was stripped, it was the, you know, the, the fall, the cliche fall carpet pulled from beneath your feet. Who am I kind of thing. And, you know, when your ego is no longer sailing, um, the unconscious waters can really start to stir, even though they've been there the whole time, you just haven't been looking. So the river overflowed and all of these traumatic experiences, um, you know, just kind of funnel in from nowhere. Um, and that led to the manifestation of obsessive compulsive disorder and, um, and panic disorder. So I had all these very bizarre thoughts come out of nowhere that wouldn't leave me, you know, from the moment I woke up to the moment I fell asleep, questioning my sexuality, you know, questioning what I, how I would um, go to hell perhaps and, and burn eternally questioning why I wasn't already schizophrenic and I that I, I couldn't that, and that I was hearing voices and seeing shapes moving that no one else could see. And that everything that I saw was um, coming from my own consciousness and I was trapped in this world and, you know, so like lots of other weird things um, that I wrote about, but the compulsions were really interesting as well because the compulsions led to a need for certainty to prove those, that those thoughts weren't valid and to, to move from a place of AFL is my life, you know, two months later to having these kind of thoughts and compulsions, I just thought I went insane. Um, wow. And it was very scary, 